Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Not so long ago, I did a video about the Federal Trade Commission banning non-compete agreements in most situations. And of course, I'm pretty sure somewhere in the video I said, this will get decided by a court. And uh, Newt sent me a note last night and said, hey, Steve, check it out. Uh, a federal judge has partially blocked the U.S. ban on non-competes. And that, of course, is the headline from NPR.org. But he sent me that link and said, you know, it, it, it went to court and it's still there. Um, so here's what's happening. Andrea Sue wrote this. A federal court in Texas has partially blocked the government's ban on non-compete agreements that was set to take effect in September. So the courts blocked it, but the court hasn't struck it down yet, but the court's thinking about it. A uh, tax service firm in Dallas had sued to block the rule just hours after the Federal Trade Commission voted narrowly to ban non-competes for almost all U.S. workers, and that was back in April. That decision came out of the U.S. District Court of the Northern District of Texas, and it postpones the effective date of the non-compete ban. So in her ruling, the judge wrote that plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits of the case and that blocking the rule temporarily is in the public interest. So when the court's considering a temporary restraining order uh, or any kind of injunctive relief of that nature, the court looks at, first of all, how likely is one side to win versus the other. And the second is how much harm will be caused by entering an injunction versus doing nothing. And here, if you enter the injunction temporarily, it's leaving things status quo, not the band, but just the concept. <laughs> You're in the army now. So by maintaining the status quo, the court goes, look, we're not really hurting anything because we're just leaving things the way they are until we resolve this. So if the plaintiffs lose and the rule gets reinstated, well, then, you know, what happened? Well, the rule got delayed a little bit, but it makes more sense than saying, hey, we're going to uh, let the rule go into effect and then later have to strike it down. So the court weighs all these things. Court wrote, while this order is preliminary, the court intends to rule on the ultimate merits of the case before August 30th. The lawsuit was joined by several organizations that represent a broad swath of American businesses, including the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable, and the Texas Association of Business. An estimated 30 million people are bound by non-competes. The employment agreements typically prevent workers from joining competing businesses or launching ones their own, but often they're signed by uh, minimum wage earners, but also all the way up to CEOs. And so I've talked about this before. There's two different types of non-competes, generally speaking, that we're talking about here. And one is you go to work someplace and they go, look, we're going to hire you. You, you. you know, if you want to work here, we'll hire you. But sign this. And you look at it and it says that if you go to work for them, that once you start working for them, if you leave, you cannot go and work for a competitor or you cannot even go and work anywhere in a certain area and, you know, do, doing the same thing. And so that one to me is a little more nefarious then the one that also pops up, and I've mentioned this before, when you go to sell a business and you are a big part of the business, but you're selling the business to someone else. If I have a business that makes widgets and I've got this proprietary Lato process for my widgets, and I say, I'm going to sell you the business, lock, stock, and barrel. It's, the entire thing is yours. And you're going to buy it from me. And you go, by the way, what are you going to do now that you're retired? And I go, I never said I was going to retire. I'm going to open up another business making widgets. <laughs> I'm going to compete directly with you. And by the way, if that business does well, I'll sell it to some other sucker, and I'll start a third business making widgets. You go, oh, in that case, I don't want to buy your business. And so those non-competes are usually the kind that both sides want to enter into to make the deal more sound. But what the real problem is for me is if you go to work for a hamburger chain of a national restaurant type, okay, and they say, oh, you're coming in, we're going to pay you minimum wage, and uh, your instructions are on the wall in pictographs, and um, you can literally start working in 30 seconds as soon as you figure out what the pictographs mean. Um, but if you work for us, you can't go work for the uh, 
other place down the street that competes with us. And it's like, are they really giving you proprietary information you're going to take over? They go, hey, guess what? I figured out how they make their hamburgers. <laughs> there are very few secrets in that industry. And so the non-compete in that setting is usually just there to lock up a worker so they'll stay longer because, well, where am I going to go? And so there are what we call equities on both sides. I can see arguments for both sides of this. Uh, I personally, personally think that the courts should take a very close look at the non-competes that affect people who are often in a position where they have no bargaining power or very little bargaining power, okay? So you walk in, you need a job, they go, here, sign this. That's different than the company being sold, and as part of the goodwill, the seller agrees not to compete with the buyer for a period of time. But there are some middle areas, and I've mentioned this before. Uh, the radio is a great example. I know people who worked at radio stations who said that, you know, you're going to be our morning man or morning gal. <laughs> and uh, in exchange for that, we're going to put up billboards around town. We're going to do TV commercials. We're going to do all kinds of promotion. We're going to build you up and make you into a fixture in the local radio market. And you might be saying, Steve, what is radio? Okay, I'm talking to the old school people right now, but this is true in many other industries where someone is going to make an investment in you because you came to work there. And a lot of radio stations would have people sign a non-compete saying that if you work here and then you leave, you agree not to work in this market for a period of time or within a certain radius of this market because not all markets are that well-defined. So, for instance, in Michigan, you might have radio stations in Saginaw, Bay City, Midland, Flint, uh, and then like Owasso licenses, right? And some of those stations are fairly, fairly near each other. So it might be that, that you, if, you, if you're working at this station, they might say, draw a line out, you know, 50 miles or 75 miles from our transmitter site and draw a big circle. You cannot work within that, that kind of thing. And that, to me, makes a little more sense. But... The real problem I have is, like I said, the entry-level workers who aren't getting any proprietary information, nothing special about their training. They're not going to take down the industry by going across the street to a competitor. Um, I think that's more about locking up the workers because I've heard that once in a while now, uh, good help is hard to find. So the judge has ruled that as of right now, the rule has been stayed, meaning that ain't nothing going to happen for a little while. Now, she says that she will rule on the merits on or before August 30th, and the rule is set to take effect September 4th. So if she rules on the 30th and strikes the rule down, the Federal Trade Commission can then appeal that, and then if they lose there, they can appeal that. And of course, if either side loses there, they can appeal that. And this is the kind of thing that um, will probably take the U.S. Supreme Court to rule on, uh, because in its complaint... The tax prep company accused the FTC of overstepping its statutory authority in declaring all non-competes unfair and anti-competitive. And the judge wrote, the FTC lacks substantive rulemaking authority with respect to unfair methods of competition. So through a statement Wednesday evening, the FTC said its authority is supported by both statute and precedent. Spokesperson said, we will keep fighting to free hardworking Americans from unlawful non-competes, which reduce innovation, inhibit economic growth, trap workers, and undermine Americans' economic liberty. So one thing I can tell you is I've had in my career, and I've been practicing on it for 33 years, in my career, I've gotten several phone calls that I can think of from people who said, Steve, I um, was working for a while at a place, I left, and now I'm being sued. They go, oh, what are they suing you for? Well, I signed something when I went to work for them. Okay, a contract? Yeah, but it contains a non-compete. They say, oh, okay, what does a non-compete say? And they tell me. And I say, okay, and they're suing you for violation of that, right? Yes. And I say, okay, um, did you read that when you signed it and went to work for them? And I've had a lot of people tell me two things. I read it but didn't really understand it. Or... I didn't think it was legal. And I had several people tell me that. They go, they go, these things are not enforceable, are they? 
You know, and I've mentioned before that I often get phone calls from people who've got the order of operations out of whack, okay? There's an order in which you do things. And people often do something, then call an attorney. And I know why, because they think, well, if I call an attorney now, it's going to cost me some money maybe. But then if the attorney says, no, no, these things are unenforceable, then I just wasted my money. Except now you know that if you'd called an attorney beforehand, they said, no, these things are enforceable, or they can be at least, depending on how they're written. Um, You need to be careful about that. And so it's unfortunate that there are people out there who have signed these thinking they were unenforceable. Because in most states they are, so long as the non-compete is rational and not horribly unfair. And by horribly unfair, I mean if it says, hey, look, you come work for us, you cannot work in this little area for one year in the same field. Court's probably going to say, okay, that makes sense. However, if it says, if you work for us and you leave, you can no longer work in any industry on the face of the planet. <laughs> no, it's not enforceable. It's too broad and it appears to be punitive. Okay, And so most of them have got to be reasonable with respect to what you can and cannot do and when you can and can cannot do it and where you can and cannot do it. And so... The other ones I've heard of are people in very, very specialized industries where somebody, let's suppose that a company uh, provides material of some sort to companies that make auto parts, okay? So let's suppose that you are a company that sells material. It could be plastic, it could be naga hide, it could be be plywood to the auto industry, okay? And they tell you, they go, when you come in here, you're going to be visiting all of these companies People make car parts, and you're going to be selling them our material, trying to get them to buy our material, okay? And so the first thing that's going to happen when you come in is we're going to tell you who all all our customers are. You're going to get a list of all our customers and all our contacts. And if a person could come in, get that list, and then call up a competitor and go, hey, look, I've got their list. Hire me at a bump from what they're paying me. I'll come over and bring the list with me. I mean, you can understand why a non-compete would make sense there. So you got to always look at these things from both sides. But again, like I said, there's generally speaking a division in how you look at these. And that is the people who are asked to sign non-competes when they're simply going to work at a job where they're not going to learn anything important that could hurt the company these people left. It's just just simply to hold the person there. Versus the people who actually have gained valuable information from a transaction And they don't want to just give that up to somebody who can then leave with it. And then, of course, like I said, with the sale of a business. So as of right now, the rule has been put on hold. It hadn't gone into effect yet. It was set to take effect September 4th. But the judge says she'll rule by then. But, of course, appeals will follow. I guarantee you. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Newt, thanks for sending it. NPR.org published that. Federal judge partially blocks U.S. ban on non-competes. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Have a great fourth. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Wise men don't judge. They seek to understand.